Tee toss out with a music beat. SP got motor key. On today's episode of 1 800, I need horsepower. Y'all see, we're working on the wrist suspension in the rear end. Let y'all see what I'm using to make this thing work on these hard tires. We got some competition engineering shocks for the front and the rear. We have a Detroit True Track Posi unit in this box right here. I have a um, a Power Lunch or something like that. I think diff cover. It's the one that's got the studs in it to keep that uh, carrier from moving under those harsh conditions when you're lunching it. We got some billet specialty lug nuts. We have our install kit, some Lucas 890, got a ring and pinion gear, got uh, some longer screw in Moser studs, half by 20s, got us uh, some trick springs by Moroso. Last but not least, we got some Moser axles, 28 spline. All going in. Bam! That's 7.5. You can see I already got it gutted out up under there. Yeah, man, we finna build this 7.5. I'm gonna be the guinea pig for y'all. And we're gonna see how much uh power this thing can handle. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw everything I can throw at it. I'm gonna try to make, they say between 500, they, you know, they good up to that. I'm gonna try to throw at least 750 horses at this little 7.5 and see how she hold up. And when I say I'm gonna throw everything in it, y'all, I mean everything. So like I said, these are all the ingredients I use to make this ring work. We're gonna be on a hard tie, big wheel, 275, 25, 24. Right after we get this rear end installed, we're gonna come right in on the inside. Inside ain't bad, like I showed before. I don't have much to do right here. Just gonna um, clean up like some of the carpet is faded, scratch marks and scuff marks on the door panels. I'm gonna add a, um, I'm gonna put a dash pad or dash cap over that dash. Um, just knock some of this stuff right here out. Put the dash cover over it. And like they say, the interior be back speaking span. We ain't gonna spend too much time there. The doors close amazing. So yeah, man. Project 30 days, I think this is like day seven. This is day seven. And as you can see, man, we're moving right along. We're gonna have, get in the rear end, put together, back up under the car. Once I get the interior tightened up, we're gonna come right back around, get the body prep for paint. Once it's painted, I go back under the bottom, undercoat everything, and we'll be ready to stop. I uh, mean, we'll be ready to snatch that stock 350 up out of there and get ready to drop this new mysterious power plant down in there. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Y'all see where we're going. Project 30 Days on the way. All right, we got all four ties on. I got everything that I showed y'all that I was putting on the car on, except for the Moroso Trick Springs. So when I installed the springs, for y'all that don't know, one of them come longer than the other, and one is more stiffer than the other. So when I put the springs on, the car sat extremely too low, and it caused excessive rubbing and grinding on the tire. So let me show y'all what I'm talking about and why I had to put the stock springs back on and I cut um, an inch and a half out of the coil to get it to sit to this ride height right here. So to get it to sit like this, I had to cut an inch and a half out of the rear coil. And this is not how I wanted it to sit. So I actually had the car sitting two inches lower front and rear and i ended up once i raised the back up an inch and a half i had to raise the front two inches to level it out so for the last 24 hours i've been playing with ride height and setting the shocks to get it to work with the way that the car is sitting so i'm gonna just show y'all why i had to do that so what happened was the tire was when the body of the car would come down um, and move when the ground was not level. What would happen is the tire was going up into the fender well, and right here, it was rubbing on the inside of the fender well right here in this crease line. So with the car sitting 
two inches lower, it sat like over the top of the rim here. So this part of the tire, whenever you would go to make a turn, would come up and touch the body part right here. Now the reason that happened is because I'm running this 7.5 rear end. So even with the frame notch, on my last Malibu, I had the rear end, I had a nine inch under it. So I had the rear end shortened an inch and a half on both sides. So that allowed me to pull the tire in this way, an inch and a half, which allowed it to clear this little fender flare on the inside. So when I dropped the car two inches and the body of the car would shift and move, the tire would go up past this level into the fender wheel and clear. So unfortunately, on this 7.5, I'm definitely not about to narrow no 7.5. You can just cancel that. So I had to make it work. So I had to bring the whole ride height of the car up and this is what we come up with. So I'm gonna pull it out, and let y'all get a full 360 view of it. Um, it's one other small thing I gotta add in the front to help make this thing work, to help make the suspension work the way I need it to on the rims with this height. So pull it out, let y'all get a 360 view and see how this thing looking. My Chevy candy paint still dripping. Fish bowl wonder just so you can see who in it. King ranch and tear with the peanut butter stitching. Three scar 12 trunk beating off the hinge. Pocket stuff with Benjamin Ryan clean still winning. Fish bowl paint wet. Ryan clean. I got a stupid check. Showroom clean. Pull up to the show like DJ Khaled. Candy paint, cruising through the city, laid back on the 